This is purpose of life. We welcome you to this program, Purpose of Life. I enjoy doing this program because of this very word, purpose and life. Joining me in the studios today is Brother Paul Moses, founder of Fountain of Compassion Ministries. Let's meet him and ask him a few straight questions. Brother Paul, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's always a joy to stay with you and connect with you in this program. Your ministry says uh, it's uh, compassion, it's fountain of compassion. Yeah. Uh, before we get into the topic, I just want to understand uh, how you framed, what is the reason or backdrop behind this topic uh, of the way you framed your particular uh, ministry? Yes, um, uh, you know, when I was praying for uh, the vision of this ministry uh, almost 25 years back, the Lord uh, revealed that He is a compassionate God. Every time Jesus performed a miracle, we read in the Bible, whenever He saw people in pain, the first thing, He was moved with compassion. And uh, even today, He is the same God. And our ministry reaches mainly to the brokenhearted, taking the compassion of Christ. And it's a fountain because God's compassion never dries up. And that's how it's fountain of compassion mm -hmm. ministry. From another angle, uh, this word compassion, um, but God also at some stage comes as a judge. Uh, how do you evaluate that part with compassion? Yeah, the first uh, step is he steps into a, a broken person's life. First, he heals that life. Know, first, what is needed is not judgment, you know. We, we even see when the Pharisees, the religious leaders, brought a woman who had committed adultery and sin. And uh, they were asking, the law says to stone her to death. And what do you say, Jesus? They were waiting to actually catch him at his word. But then Jesus told them, the one who has not committed any sin, you can throw the stone. Yes, he is the judge, but first, he is the one who forgives and he heals and he restores. And we know that, you know, they were convicted and they all left. So first he heals, he forgives, and he's a compassionate God. But once we receive compassion, and once we receive the healing of God in our lives, He puts our life into place. Uh, he takes the broken pieces and turns it into a beautiful life. Then you are accountable for the life that you have been given. Mm -hmm. So definitely we have a responsibility. I don't think that woman, you know, uh, we read in the Bible that when everybody had left, the woman was there, Jesus was there. And uh, he asked, uh, did they not stone you? She said, nobody, Lord. And he says, go and uh, live a new life. Don't sin. I don't think she would have gone back to that sin. Mm. She becomes accountable to her life. So obviously, once we have received the new life, then we need to be accountable. And uh, one day we need to submit our what we have done with our lives. We need to answer the judge. So, compassion also has a package of accountability. Absolutely. absolutely. Accountability. We are going to look into a very interesting topic in the Bible and uh, and it's a very unique positioning also. And uh, many people have done a lot of studies about this book. And this book really excites me a lot because uh, there's so much learning for not just us but our viewers and this. Uh, and uh, whichever age we belong to, there is so much learning when we read this book. The book I'm mentioning is the book of Job. And it's an amazing book. It's got full of life, practical, real issues. Mm. But uh, before I get into the uh, book itself, the book is positioned after Esther and before Psalms. And the book itself is uniquely positioned in the Old Testament and uh, by the work of the Holy Spirit in a, in a very strategic uh, place. Yeah. Uh, from As a Bible teacher, as somebody who deals with the Word of God, teaches constantly, What's your first take on when you hear this positioning of this book in the Bible and the Old Testament? 
of this topic, Job. What's your first take on this whole thing? Actually, we see uh, the book of Job, it's, it's an interesting book, but some of the people, actually, I've come across people who are a bit afraid to read the book of Job because um, it deals with sufferings. But as you say, it's an amazing book because it talks about absolute reality. So before Job, we, we see uh, a lot of stories where God picks up people like Ezra and Nehemiah and Esther. And God raises them up to do great uh, uh, purposes, fulfilling his purposes. Under difficult circumstances. Absolutely. In, in, their, in their captivity, God raises them up. And uh, from Psalm, that is after Job comes the book of Psalms. And Psalms is a, is a book of singing the praises of God. And even uh, sharing the burdens of a human heart to God. So Psalms is more of relationship. And uh, in between, uh, you know, these two kinds of how God raises up one man to do great destinies, uh, to do great uh, uh, things, exploits. And uh, Psalm talks about praising and prayers. But in between, here is a man where Job deals with a lot of reality in life. Mm. The, the, you know, a man who trusts God. But in the midst of being trusted, though he is blessed, but he also goes through the pain and how he handles the pain in life. So I believe uh, it is a very real book. There is a lot of uh, reality that we see in the book of Job. Uh, let me get straight into the topic of this uh, book, uh, Job. The first few chapters and the last chapters are very unique mm -hmm. and there is a lot of depth when we read the whole book. But just to begin with, uh, the, it's a beautiful story of a, of a man who stood differently or separately. His whole calling itself was unique. Uh, so let's deal with the first part of it. Here is a rich man, a well-to-do man, and a man who had everything in life. But yet, uh, the level at which he was connected with God was unique. How do you see that uh, that whole statement in the beginning part of the first chapter? How do you read that? What 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 kind of learning do we get from that initial part of the book of Job? It is said that uh, Job is the very first book that has been written in the whole Bible, though it is positioned in between. Mm. And uh, one of the myths or fallacies that uh, religious people uh, do have is if somebody is wealthy, then uh, he cannot be close to God. Mm, that's very interesting because Abraham was very wealthy. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Uh, but such kind of a mind people have. Mm, and uh, again, if someone is uh, very close to God, then he has to really refrain from everything, maybe became, become a, a sage-like person, mm. a saint-like person. But that one is uh, busted, you know. The book of Job uh, begins saying, God himself testifying that this man was righteous, he feared God, and he stayed away from evil. So it really is very interesting because you can actually walk in the word of God. You can walk with God and you can be blessed. Because, in fact, what is the purpose of God for the whole human race? God created man that, you know, it's not that he should suffer. God put him in the Garden of Eden. He, he created a garden to put man inside. So, God's heart for man is always for good and not for evil. So, when you walk with God, when you have a relationship with God, when you invest into that relationship, when you grow in the knowledge of God, when you delight in His ways, like in Psalm 112, if you read, it says that, blessed is the man who delights in the ways of God and walks in His ways, and in His house that is riches and blessings. So I believe, uh, you know, walking with God is always a blessing. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
it it uh, really blesses us. So so that's what it it begins with. The, the book begins with. The book begins with, and uh, Job, uh, uh, unlike other business people of his time, he had a very special uh, favor with God. Mm. Uh, why do you think uh, that there was a unique favor which God had for Job? What would that take be, or is there any fundamental principles behind that favor? Because there were a lot of people, but God looked at Job differently. So, what was the reason for God to look at Job differently, or what was the reason for Satan to look at Job differently? Mm -hmm. So, that is my question. God always chooses people, you know, uh, right from the beginning, God chose Noah and he had a mission. God chose Abraham and he became the father of faith. So, Isaac and Jacob. So, God chooses individuals. It's so amazing that, you know, many of the books in the Bible, we see that God chooses a man and uh, how the man relates with God. And the book is about his relationship with that man and what God does through that man. I believe that God is a personal God. So mm -hmm. God chose Job for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And everyone's purpose might be different. You know, mm -hmm. God doesn't choose everyone uh, the same way and uses them the same way. So that doesn't mean that one person is uh, of a you know, higher favor mm -hmm. than the other person. For example, Abraham was chosen and he was uh, blessed in a, in a specific way. He was blessed in, in, in wealth and everything. God gave him the land. And Isaac was blessed in a specific way that, you know, unlike Abraham, who journeyed from place to place and who had cattle and other things, Isaac was a farmer. And uh, wherever Isaac went, God made space for Isaac. So Jacob was blessed in a different way. In the same way, Job was blessed in a specific way wherein we find that he had a relationship with God he spent time with God every day. He was a man of prayer. He feared God. There are some principles that we see in the life of Job mm. that set apart from other business people, as you mentioned. He feared God and stayed away from evil. Mm. He walked with God. And all these things really favored him to have a blessing that is different from others. Mm. Uh, just before we take a short break, um, some of the words which I see, which God certifies, uh, uh, yeah. is very unique, you mm. know, when it comes to the posting. The Lord said to Satan, uh, you know, if you look at 1 chapter 1 verse 7, and it says, from, from where do you come? Then Satan answered the Lord saying, from roaming about on the earth and walking. Then on the 8th verse, the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, for there is no one like him on the earth? Now, this is where it comes to what you are saying, blameless, upright, fearing God and turning away from evil. Mm -hmm. Now, that's precisely what you mentioned on the foundation of uh, what it takes to be close with God. We'll take a short break, but after that, uh, my question is, how do you uh, adapt to these principles? Mm -hmm. That's my question. Because uh, uh, it's one to, uh, one to be prosperous, but it's one to be highly favored by God. So, my question is, uh, this is certified by God himself. Yes. And these are uh, not small words. These are huge words. Mm. And uh, it's God certifying uh, about a character of a person. Exactly. So let's talk about it after this short break. And uh, I'm sure many viewers will get blessed by these points which they learn. So stay tuned and uh, join us after this short break.